Okay. So, uh, can you see this slide? The first slide? Um, yes, sir. Okay, so yes, this yes, lecture uh, for next uh, one hour, we will discuss the procurement planning, uh, which is the first step in the procurement process. Uh, in the uh, last two lectures, we mainly uh, discussed the subject matter of the procurement management, uh, the five or six generic steps, and uh, then uh, certainly the... Uh, sir, sir, excuse me. Gigi. Gigi. Sir, sir, one question is about joint venture, which you have talked about. Yes, yes. Sir, when joint venture has a lot of issues we have witnessed in our department, that uh, when they submit their documents, uh, uh, should we take it that there must be 50-50 uh, in both sides, in both contractors must submit whatever they submit? Uh, there must no, be it's, it's not necessary. Or, uh, because, it's not necessary because, you see, normally the joint ventures are made uh, between the two partners, which uh, one of the partner may have, for example, uh, the local form from the GB, maybe having the local uh, strength like uh, easy access to the site, the availability of local material. Uh, the bigger partner may be having uh, experience, uh, international and national experience. So it's not necessary that uh, both the partners should be 50 50 it can be even 30 70 it can be 80 20 but the more important is their legal relationship that for example under the jv agreement they should specify their rules uh, for example a partner can not be uh, involved in the execution but they can provide some financial support to the uh, to the uh, small partner so uh, that's why I always emphasize that the JV partnership must be uh, executed on the PEC bidding document, uh, PEC JV document, and their, their JV document which is 56 pages long, uh, provides all these details that, for example, who will be the lead partner, who will be executing the project, what will be the role of the uh, two partners, who will be financially managing the project, who will be physically managing the project, and so on. And if tomorrow there is any issue regarding their role or in, there is any dispute, uh, I'll give you a very interesting story. Uh, that There was a project uh, which was uh, uh, the extension of the uh, one of my students, Hafiz Sajjad, I think, uh, I, I just went there for deliver uh, some lectures in the in the uh, in Quetta uh, to the engineers about the procurement and contract, and uh, he he told me a story that uh, there was a JV agreement between the two partners, and uh, the problem was that under this uh, one of the JV partners, the project was about eight billion or uh, four billion, uh, so they had to submit uh, two percent would mean uh, something like 80 million uh, of the uh, of the call deposit so they 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 agreed that uh, 40 million will be uh, a pay order of 40 million will be made by one partner and the 40 million now what happened that uh, the genuine partner who was doing the project he produced a, a, a cdr of 40 million and the other partner uh, produce a fake CDR with the connaissance of the bank. This is very common in Pakistan, you know. Now, what happened that when the uh, firm was given the work order based on the CDR, they did not, they did not verify. So the first lesson learned uh, for all of us is, and for all of you is, that before you award the work, the call deposit or the earnest money must be verified from the bank. That whether it is a genuine CDR or maybe sometime make, people pick a fake CDRs with the connaissance of the local banks. Uh, but the first problem, uh, uh, the first blunder they did that they did not verify. I always advise my staff to verify the CDRs first before we award the work. Because you know that this is very important that uh, before the award of work, you should verify the CDR, you should get the performance bond, and then you should award the work and start the work. If it, that is not done, uh, then certainly you will be at risk. So uh, once this uh, uh, they awarded the work, the project was started. And later on, uh, what happened that when we when they sent the 
CDR for verification, the big uh, manager diagnosed that this is a fake CDR, which has been made with the connance of the, of the local, manage, uh, local officer of the bank. And uh, finally, they booked uh, a case with the FIA against the contractor. Now, this was really a big challenge because the actual person who was doing the project uh, was a sincerely doing the project and the, the department and the employer wanted that he must continue. But unfortunately, uh, uh, the, the case was referred to the FIA. The FIA uh, then uh, arrested the contractor and also the bank manager or bank officer who was uh, instrumental in uh, developing the fake document and so on. Uh, and then uh, for a long time, the project remained suspended because uh, the actual partner who was really interested to do the project uh, was also not allowed to start the work again till the resolution. So they referred the case to me and I advised them that it must be referred to the contract division of the National Highway, uh, of the National Highway Authority, or I think the, the, the uh, Civil Aviation Authority. And they should then form uh, that, uh, that what should, because certainly this was a criminal case now. And so I, I usually am really very afraid of the giant ventures. My experience with the giant ventures projects had not been very successful because what happens that one bigger partner would use their name and the smaller partner would not have the capacity sometimes. And but certainly if both the partners are compatible in the sense that they have the resources and experience of equal uh, of equal amount, then it can be a good partner. In in your context. Uh, it is not mandatory that it should be 50-50, but I think if the, the partners are compatible in terms of their resources, their assets, their experience, then they can make a very good partnership as a JV partnership uh, to do the work. Uh, but remember that JV partnership can be specific to a pro for a project. It cannot be uh, indefinite period. So when we are, when we are uh, developing the JV partnership on the on the Pakistan Engineering Council templates, we have to identify the projects also, and that is project specific. But but legally, there is no bind, uh, bond on that, uh, that there must be equal resources on both sides that can depend on the nature of project. Then sometimes even uh, we try to bring the people from local uh, areas as a partners so that there is any challenge from the local community, uh, the partners can handle these projects. This is very common also in, uh, in, in Gilgit uh, due to the various challenges that we sometimes bring the people from local community also to be partnered with the uh, bigger, uh, bigger uh, contractors. And that becomes uh, a bit easy for you to do the project sometimes. So, uh, the procurement strategy uh, is basically uh, to determine uh, that what the procurement uh, method we will be using, uh, what will be the kind of agreement uh, which uh, will be adopted, and uh, uh, what will be the uh, uh, different phases in, involved in the procurement. So these are the questions we normally uh, decide during the procurement strategy. Uh, it is a structured analytical approach designed to support procurement planning, how the project activities will support the development objectives of the project. So this is very important that you have a, uh, for example, uh, uh, the operating environment is very important, the beneficiary capacity, track record, the market, and then you uh, go for the approaches, for example, the type of requirement, the market approach, the selection method, the contract type, the evaluation criteria, the contract management plan, all these are very important when you decide about the procurement strategy. So these are the very important components of the procurement strategy. Now, for example, uh, uh, these are different stages uh, in the strategy. Uh, we, we decide about the procurement, for example, uh, what are the specific project needs? Uh, what are the uh, potential impact of these uh, on the procurement? Uh, assessment of the implementing agency's capacity. For example, if university is doing uh, the procurement, they, whether they have the capacity to handle that kind of uh, challenges or not, then the uh, capabilities of the market where you are doing this project, whether the project, uh, whether the uh, the the uh, market will have the uh, kind of resources which we need for the implementation of the project, and then finally uh, the procurement 
method of strategy, which we decide ultimately is very important. We will discuss these uh, in a bit details. Uh, for example, uh, these are uh, a kind of pro project overview. Uh, this country, for example, if it's a Pakistan, then the region, Gilgit Baltistan, the sector, maybe development sector or the social sector, the project name, maybe the uh, establishment of the faculty of engineering and technology. There is any number, uh, PSDP number we can put here. Uh, then the uh, financing, uh, it would come maybe from uh, the World Bank, maybe the HEC, from the federal government. So the number, uh, the, the, the nature of financing. And then uh, project description, for example, what are the elements of the project? For each contract, subcontract, there should be a short description of what is required from the firm, supplier, contractor, including the subcontractors, and so on. Then the objective, the project development objective should be consistent with the project development objectives and defining the project concept note. So the objectives which are defined in your PC1 are the project proposal. Then the result indicators, then how would you identify the results? And normally we use the result-based monitoring, RBMs. Then these are very common uh, in the public sector of Pakistan. So the smart indicators we discussed, it must be specific, uh, measurable, attributable, uh, and relevant in time bound, or uh, sometimes we call it achievable, uh, and linked to the project number uh, outcomes. Each project development objective should be measured by one or more indicators. Uh, the procurement contract summary, a summary of the proposed contract within the project, including the supply positioning model or any other identified contracts which we are using uh, for the procurement. The legal, uh, if you are using any uh, legal requirements like PEPRO rules or World Bank rules or any, any donors uh, rules in addition to the government rules, you can uh, uh, describe here. Now the delivery methods, uh, that how would we uh, deliver the projects? There are different uh, methods we will discuss that uh, how the, uh, for example, aap, uh, ek, uh, faculty of engineering banana chate hai. So what are the various options available uh, through which you can deliver this project? Uh, professional services delivery method include the buyer service provided with no subcontractor, uh, buyer service provided with subcontractor, and so on. For industrial and commercial construction projects, delivery method include but not limited to turnkey project, design build, design bid build, design build operate, build own operate, and so on. So uh, we will discuss these uh, methods in detail. So the first is the delivery, which we decide, and the second is the contract payment uh, to the contractor. So the two fundamental questions which we decide in the procurement planning, number one is the delivery method or the delivery strategy. And the second is the relationship between the contractor and the employer. That is how the payment will be made. We will discuss both the points in detail. So in the contract planning, we normally decide two uh, basic questions that what will be the strategy to deliver the project. Aap khud karenge, aap ek project manager engage karenge, he will then uh, be making the POQs through his team, he will then make the tenders or you will do it yourself through your own team. Uh, so these are the strategies. And the second is the payment mode that whether it will be cost plus, it will be lump sum contract, it will be uh, based on some uh, main months or so on. So the two fundamental questions which we normally decide at the time of planning, the first is the strategy, that how the project would be delivered. And the second would be, for example, the most common is design, bid, build, in which we design first through a consultant, and then we develop the BOQs, in, invite the tenders from the contractors, and then we uh, decide based on the evaluation criteria that who can be the best contractor to do that work. So this is called design bid build strategy. Now, what kind of payment mode will be utilized? For example, that, well, that will be lump sum contract. He will execute the uh, quantities. We will make the payment, or it will be a cost plus, that actual cost, uh, which is incurred on top of that, we will give him some profit, 15%, 20%, or it may be reimbursable kind of uh, uh, contract, we will discuss. So the two very important questions which we decide in the planning is the strategy which we will use uh, for the procurement and the 
contractual relationship for the payments of the uh, bills and work done. So we have discussed this. I just uh, quoted uh, to be procurement planning process is the process for identifying and consolidating requirements and determining the time frames for their procurement with the aim of having them and when they are required. A good procurement plan will describe the process and identification and selection of suppliers, contractors, consultants. In PSDB projects, activity plan and work plans are used. Planning must be done preferably for the entire project and at least for the financial year. Preferable to have a procurement committee comprising of senior officers having representation from finance, account, planning, apart from other related areas. So you should have a, a procurement committee uh, which is normally headed by a by an officer of not less than 19 grade, uh, preferably 20 grade, and uh, then the experts from different departments like finance, like IT, if there is IT procurement, and uh, other experts for the projects, so that they can collectively decide about the uh, quality of the procurement. Now, there are uh, uh, the, the 10 steps, for example, uh, we, uh, what are the terms of procurement, which is normally given in the uh, tender documents. Uh, agreement, which we will be using, it will be, uh, uh, there are different contact agreements. Uh, we will discuss, for example, you are using the red book, you are using the green book, you are using the design and build, you are using the uh, maintenance contract. So for different contracts, we have different kinds of agreements. And uh, they, the risks, which are which, what kind of risk would be involved? Uh, for example, if there is chances of delay due to bad weather, what will be the mitigation strategy with you and uh, with the contractor? Then the cost, what will be the uh, fair engineer estimate of the procurement? It's really very important. Then what will be the bidding forms, which we'll be using different templates for uh, the bidding, uh, for the insurances, for the mobilization advance, for the indemnity bonds, for the performance bonds, and so on. So we have the standard uh, forms which are used by the uh, uh, by the uh, employer. Then what are the project constraints? For example, uh, you are located in a seismic zone. Uh, you are located in an area of high floods. Uh, you are located in an area where there is uh, uh, the weather challenges. So all these. Uh, constraint must be well defined in the contract, in the project document, uh, at the planning stage. And then what will be the approval rules for the contract? For example, how the procurement decision would be done, uh, what kind of evaluation criteria would be required, and then finally the decision criteria, and uh, then uh, how the vendors will be managed uh, once the procurement is, that is contract management. In the public sector, uh, I discussed last time that we have the uh, activity planes uh, for all the major procurements. For example, uh, this is an activity chart for the land acquisition. That what are the different activities which are involved in acquiring the land for a public sector project? Uh, for example, the uh, the committee is per, uh, is constituted. Then you acquire the land, uh, selection of the land. Then you have the section four. You have the section seventeen and then you award and so on. So this whole process is comprised of different activities. And if you are planning for the land procurement, uh, certainly you would need time. You know, last time we discussed this issue last time, if you remember that uh, the land is one of the biggest issue uh, in Gilgit Baltistan, uh, because most of the time we believe that the land would be available and we don't plan for the procurement of land. And this becomes really a challenge uh, because most of the land is not settled. And when we mobilize the project, we, we see a lot of people are going to the court, even they are using the coercive practices. They are using the force of use of force sometime to stop the project. So this is really very challenging uh, that you need to have a, a better planning for the procurement. And that's why I, I said last time that it's better to procure land first in the PC2 uh, having all the feasibilities and procuring the land. And in the second phase, you may start with the project so that there is no legal encumbrances, uh, any litigation about the land. Uh, this is uh, another consultancy procurement, the various activities which are involved in the consultancy, right from the preparation of TOR to the selection and the execution of the consultancy agreements and so on. So this is again decided by the uh, given by the uh, planning commission, the guidelines, 
and you can use these guidelines to develop your uh, planning. Similarly, civil works, uh, which uh, you might be doing from the PWD or you might be doing in-house, depending on the capacity of the organization. Uh, so this, uh, again, is a very well-defined activity planning for the road construction. Uh, all the activities involved in the procurement of goods. Uh, uh, for example, if you are procuring uh, an equipment for the laboratories, uh, then certainly you will, uh, you will follow certain steps, very well-defined steps, uh, from the uh, committee constitution to the uh, uh, installation and operation. So there might be 10 to 12 generic steps which we uh, normally need to do in the procurement process. Now, based on this, uh, this uh, activity plan, we develop the work plan and cash plan. And within that, we try to see that what will be the cash, uh, the money required for this uh, uh, so this is normally done. We have the uh, the the work plan. This is an annual work plan for the projects. Uh, for example, uh, for the four quarters from July to June next, what will be the major milestones you would define? So, so those who are already working in the garment departments in GB, they have used uh, uh, these documents for developing the work plan and cash plans. Now the cash plan. Uh, is to be prepared on the basis of the allocation made in the PSD for the next financial year. So once the PDP, PSDP is announced, and normally the PSDP comes on the 1st July of the financial year, on the first day of the financial year, and the allocation is made by the uh, government for the projects, the first thing we do is to develop the uh, work plan and cash plan. So uh, normally the planning commission through the planning management information system, PMES or evaluation system, uh, advises to submit their uh, our cash plan and work plan for the entire financial year. So this is uh, the actual expenditure are the expenditure actually incurred on the project. The funds transferred to PWD, CNW department are not expenditure. Yeah, or kafi is pe amara is the fami PEC me both jagda hua. इससे पहले जो हमारे अकाउंट्स में पैसे आते थे वो लैपसेबल नहीं होते थे पिछले साल से इन्होंने ये जो है पाबंदी लगाई कि जो पीएसडीपी का जितना भी फंड होगा वो लैपसेबल होगा वी विल नॉट एक्सेप्ट एनी अमाउंट टू बी ट्रांसफर टू द नेक्स्ट ईयर सो फ्रॉम दिस ईयर दे हैव मेक इट इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर ऑल द प्रोजेक्ट्स टू बी बेस्ड ऑन असाइनमेंट अकाउंट an assignment account is a lapsable account that no money which is unutilized till the third 30th june of the year uh, will either be surrendered or it will be lapsed so if you are not using the money it's a government money you have to return it back to the government and the government would allocate this money next year uh, based on your demand but if this money is not used then it will be lapsed and there will be high accountability because the public money cannot be transferred to the next year uh, without the uh, approval. So this year, say, uh, they have made it mandatory for all the public sector projects to make the assignment account. Anybody from PWD, uh, uh, I think your projects are already, already lapsable accounts. Anybody in the class can comment on the, uh, on the cash plan. Now, in class, can you tell us what is the practice you are doing in the public sector projects in your departments? Sir, 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 may I, may I say, sir? And please continue. Uh, sir, uh, yes, we have two different types of uh, projects, PSDP projects and ADP projects. So in ADP projects, it has been, uh, you know, uh, it was advised that our funds should be utilized before 30th June on or on the day of 30th June. Uh, but uh, as GB government has its own consolidated account, sir, so funds are not actually being lapsed, but they uh, these funds are transferred to the consolidated fund of GB, sir. So uh, the funds which are not being utilized by any project of GB, they are being transferred to uh, our centralized uh, consolidated fund. As far as PSDP projects are concerned, sir, PSDP projects uh, in this year, 
the government of Pakistan has transferred the principal accounting officer powers to the chief secretary and the administrative secretary of uh, relevant departments. Sorry. So in this year, we uh, don't have any sort of, you know, uh, clarification or guidelines till now that what would be uh, the procedure if the funds are not being utilized till 30 of months. Actually, there's a high argument because earlier the HEC was given uh, a special treatment that the funds uh, which are there in the HEC and the university's account will not be lapsable because of the capacity of the university. Uh, we don't have a very good uh, utilization of money in the university. So there was an understanding in 2016 between the uh, HEC and the finance department, finance division of Pakistan, that the, the funds which will be allocated to universities through HEC, HEC will show it at utilization by transferring this money to the accounts of universities, but university uh, will not operate the lapsable accounts. Uh, but then a very big argument started last year that uh, there are billion of rupees unspent in the university's account to the tune of 12 billion and even more. Uh, so the, the, the finance division started this contestation that either this money should be either uh, uh, surrendered to the uh, uh, federal government so that the government can reappropriate it to the other projects where this money is required, or it will be lapsed. So from this year, uh, we have been now obliged uh, or we have been advised uh, to start the lapsable accounts and the lapsable account, you know, is an assignment account and the assignment account becomes zero on 30th June. All the money which is there in this, uh, the lapsable account becomes zero on 30th June. You, ha you either have to use that money or you have to surrender that money to the federal government for appropriation to any other project. So this is really a challenging uh, time for the universities also because, uh, alhamdulillah, in our case, we could utilize the money effectively and all the project money was spent this year. But in most of the, uh, the universities, there are challenges because uh, they don't have the kind of project management. Uh, uh, they are not engineers, vice chancellor, most of the time. So they couldn't use the money in time. And there is a challenge that how they would... Uh, uh, our PERA, which was uh, discussed in the Public Accounts Committee on PEC, has been settled because we, we ensured them that all the money of the PSDP project will be uh, has been transferred to the assignment account and we don't have any uh, unspent amount in the last year. And based on that, uh, this PERA was settled, but certainly they gave us very tough time uh, that why this money was not uh, placed in the assignment account. So what I understand that even in GB, maybe in times to come, uh, they uh, make it mandatory for the government uh, to place their money in the lapsable accounts. Uh, hello, sir. I'm Nasir, engineer Nasir Hussain, working. For Aji, please, Nasir, continue. Uh, sir, our uh, project is a DP project. Hai. और इसमें सर बेसिकली गवर्नमेंट ऑफ गिरगित बल्दिस्तान ने लोन लिया है इफात से ये सॉफ्ट लोन है 40 इयर्स के लिए तो इसमें हमारा जो भी पेमेंट होती है वो टू टाइप्स के उसमें चेक्स जाते हैं अब तक उसमें एक जो होता है क्योंकि इसमें गवर्नमेंट ऑफ पाकिस्तान का अपना भी शेयर है प्लस इफात का भी शेयर है जिस तरह एफईसी और लोकल कंपोनेंट होता है इस तरह तो इसमें हर जो पेमेंट है उसके दो किस्म के चेक्स बनते हैं एक इफात के लिए और एक जो है हमारा गवर्नमेंट ऑफ पाकिस्तान के गवर्नमेंट ऑफ पाकिस्तान का जो वही लेप्सेबल अकाउंट है हमारा वो 30 जून को लेप्स हो जाता है जो हमारी रेगुलर रिलीजेस आती है वेयर इज फॉर इफात वी हैव एन अकाउंट व्हिच इज ऑपरेटेड सेट लाइक दैट के जितना हम पेमेंट करते हैं जहां पे जितना वर्क डन होता है इतना ही हम में वो रिएंबर्स करते हैं वो इतना मनी so what we understand that there are two components in your funding. One is the ADP, which is lapsable account, and the other is donor fund, which is not lapsable because the donor fund is either a soft term, a term loan, and this is a money which is placed in a separate account, uh, which is brought forward to the next year. Uh, the, the balance is brought forward. So. This is normally the practice we do for the international projects because the international money cannot be lapsed. It is a donor money. It is a it is a uh, loaner or donor money. 
So we cannot say that it can be lapsed, but certainly the utilization of the funds is a very big challenge. And if we don't utilize the funds in time, uh, the time value of money uh, is a very important factor because the, the, the money would not be having that value. The things would become more expensive. The revision would be required. And that's why the efficiency of the uh, financial management would need to utilize the funds in time so that uh, the time value of money is achieved. Many times, uh, the international money, uh, for example, in one of the old projects, uh, the money was contributed in dollars. And uh, since we kept, could not maintain the dollar account, so the money was uh, converted into uh, park rupees at that time, maybe at 80 or six, uh, 86 or 85 rupees per dollar. But today, if we are buying the, uh, the, the machineries in dollars, it's not possible because the dollar is shooted up uh, for more than four to five times. Uh, so even three times, if not four times. Uh, so uh, dollar today, maybe around 230 uh, is three times expensive uh, at the time we had this dollar available. So that's why the international procurement or the procurement uh, from donor funds should be done uh, very in time so that uh, you don't have the problem. Because the normally the international uh, funding agency do, do, don't allow to any revision of cost. So if there is any increase in the cost, the donor may not be giving you additional money and that money you have to contribute from local funds. And that sometimes becomes really a big burden for the organization. So we don't have the equipment because the money we have is very limited uh, for the procurement of equipment because uh, uh, the, the, the prices have gone up per three times. And that is the challenge we, we face in the donor's projects. So in the donor projects, I think you should be double careful uh, to have a better planning so that the procurement is done within the uh, given time and you don't have a lot of revisions. Otherwise, the burden would be shifted to the department and to the, uh, to the government of Pakistan. So we have different kind of information like uh, what is the item and what is the uh, approved cost and uh, then we go for the cumulative expenditure during last up to last year and then we give the uh, the, the quarterly financial the work plan uh, this should come a bit based on our activity plan we develop the uh, uh, work plan for example what will be our targets in the first quarter of the year maybe uh, we are starting the project we may say that in the first quarter we may uh, assign the consultancy uh, contract. Uh, maybe by second quarter, we say that uh, we complete the design process and at the same time, we also uh, pre-qualify the contractors. And maybe in third uh, quarter, we say that the work will be started and completed uh, up to certain level and so on. So based on our activities, which we have defined in the activity planning, we develop the work plan quarterly basis uh, Okay, can you see the uh, presentation? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So I, I would advise that in your class, in my opinion, आप इनायत साहब आप इनको अगली दफा कोई अपने प्रोजेक्ट का कैश प्लान और वर्क प्लान शेयर करें जो आपने इस साल बनाया है यू जस्ट एक्सप्लेन दैट हाउ डिड यू डेवलप द वर्क प्लान आप कौन से प्रोजेक्ट पे इस वक्त काम कर रहे हैं पीएसडीपी का प्रोजेक्ट कौन कर रहा है हु इज डूइंग द पीएसडीपी प्रोजेक्ट दिस ईयर मैं शेयर कर दूंगा ओके सो यू विल जस्ट एक्सप्लेन दैट हाउ डिफरेंट क्वार्टरली माइलस्टोन्स एंड टारगेट्स हैव बीन वर्कड आउट uh, based on the, your activity plan and what is the expected cost. So from your activity plan, you define the work plan and from your work plan, you define the cash plan. So this is the hierarchy that activities Sorry. are defined first. Then from activity, you go to the uh, work plan, quarterly work plan. And from quarterly work plan, you go to the quarterly cash plan and annual cash plan. So this is the hierarchy of planning, which we normally do in the procurement as per the PSDP requirements. And every year uh, in the first week of July or by mid of July, you have to provide the government 
the PSDP planning of your project, that how would you utilize this money? If, for example, the government is giving you 100 million or 200 million for the engineering faculty, then how the uh, project uh, office or how the KIU will be utilizing this 200 million rupees in the next uh, one year? That is normally, uh, we, we describe that in the project profile and uh, the uh, project uh, cash plan and work plan and cash plan. Just uh, finally, uh, two more slides. A developing countries like Pakistan annually spends around 20% of gross domestic production or $60 billion in, in our case through this medium uh, procurement. This includes approximately 90% budget of the public sector enterprises. So the public sector enterprises are using almost 90% of their budgets uh, for the procurement. Multiple sources indicate that Pakistan can save at least $18 billion annually by optimizing its public procurement. This is a study, uh, some of the, uh, the study uh, which has been done by the experts, that if the public procurement is done efficiently and effectively by utilizing uh, best practices, we can save almost... Uh, 25 or 20 percent of the annual budget for the procurement is around 80 mil, 18 million dollars, 18 billion dollars. This implies that highlights that the supply chain has become a highly specialized field <clears throat> and requires corresponding level of professional capacity for its management in addition to a robust governance structure. So it's not only the law which is important, the more important is the capacity of you people who are involved in the procurement of projects that how a best decision can be done, how a best uh, strategy can be adopted, how a best uh, decision can be made in, a, in time so that the procurement becomes more efficient if, and effective. So besides the governance, uh, which is the law like PEPRA or other rules, you should have a very good capacity to handle the different challenges of the procurement process. What can we do to improve the public procurement performance in Pakistan? I think uh, there are a lot of things. Uh, Certainly, the first and the foremost would be developing the capacity uh, of the of the uh, of the people who are involved in the procurement processes. The second would be uh, implementation uh, of the law and the procurement rules and the bidding documents and the PC uh, bidding documents and true spirits. Uh, that would be a very uh, second challenge. And the third, I think, would be uh, that uh, redefining. Our contract uh, contractor uh, registration processes, because in most of the cases, the contractors are not having the kind of, of resources uh, which they need for the project. So, the PC registration process is also not very effective and efficient, and that is not uh, bringing the most capable people as contractors in Pakistan. And that is one of the biggest challenges. Uh, at the same time, uh, we can. Uh, uh, strengthen the law also because there are very uh, shortfalls in the law and the governance structures uh, of the procurement in Pakistan. So some of the recommendations that the PEPRA needs to be provided with an advisory board of high-level supply chain management experts for professional guidance. It may be preferably be a statute institution. Now, uh, there is a consideration that there must be Pakistan Procurement Institute uh, where the people are guided, where the people are trained. In PEC, uh, at a time we established the Pakistan uh, Caste and uh, Project Institute, but unfortunately, due to the internal politics and conflicts of PEC, it did not work. Uh, the idea was that there must be an institute within PEC which can uh, resolve the issues, which can uh, guide uh, the procuring agencies uh, about the different procurement issues, which can uh, resolve the issues related to the uh, price adjustments and things like that. So this this was a good idea. Unfortunately, uh, you know, in Pakistan, uh, every good idea is becoming victim of politics. So certainly it becomes really a big challenge. Uh, most of the developed countries have facilitated conflict resolution by integrating specialized institutions such as the public procurement ombudsman, procurement tribunals, courts, as well as regulatory bodies concerned. Now, this is another very big challenge because uh, when we go to the normal uh, courts, the civil courts, you know that the procurement is a very specialized uh, area. And again, it takes a lot of time. Uh, 
so there are in many countries there are procurement tribunals, construction tribunals, engineering tribunals, ombudsmen uh, who are specialized people uh, to resolve the issues related to the procurement. Uh, and I'll share with you just a couple of uh, slides that how this procurement dispute is becoming a big challenge in Pakistan. The critical gap in the bid evaluation criteria driven by the slogan of technically acceptable and commercially lowest appears to have been bridged by the recent revision of the PEPRA. I said last time that it was good that after that, we gave a lot of inputs to the PEPRA and they gave the term of the most advantageous bid, the most advantageous bid, the most advantageous bid, the most advantageous bid. Uh, last time the term was used a lowest evaluated bid, but this created a lot of confusion because if we go for the lowest, uh, the, the best may not be the lowest. So we uh, advise the uh, PEPRA that uh, this is the most advantageous bid based on the evaluation criteria which has to be selected. So this was a, a change in the new document. PEPRA may consider introducing regulations for inventory management, centralized inventories and framework contracts for the common use items. So for supply items, uh, the PEPRA has uh, introduced the framework contract this time in 2021 version, but that uh, framework contract needs further, uh, further improvement. We will discuss this in PEPRA lecture. Incorporating the dedicated rules for engineering procurement and construction contracts. EPC contracts, you know, these are like a turnkey projects in which the design, the procurement, and the construction is done by the same firm, like the WADA is doing this uh, mega projects of the Heidel uh, projects. So uh, this, uh, uh, there is specific document used by the mm, so uh, FedEx use karre, where Khalbe FedEx is using for EPC or turnkey projects, they are using, uh, let me just check the, the, uh, the PEPRA books, because there are eight books which are used by PEPRA, and one, one uh, document which is used for EPC uh, is specifically for those projects where the entire design, procurement, and construction is uh, owned by. So for EPC projects, uh, there is a need to develop uh, more uh, robust documents uh, by the PC uh, based on the the FedEx documents. Say we will discuss this in the FedEx lecture. Uh, I'm further developing it. There are eight or nine documents. The most common is red document: the green, yellow, pink, uh, and uh, white, silver. <laughs> uh, it's called. Sometimes it is called. Uh, the the FedEx Rainbow Suites. So the FedEx Rainbow Suites is basically the different kinds of documents which are used for contracts. And these contracts are very specific to the nature of procurement. So every contract cannot be used for every work. So the Red Book is the most commonly used book in the world uh, for the projects which are designed, built, built. We are, uh, the employer is uh, designing the facility from one consultant and then engage with the contractors uh, so that is the red book is the most common, but unfortunately we are using 1987 version. Uh, even the 1999 is much better. We will discuss uh, the ch the changes which has happened around the uh, in, in last 30 or 40 years or 50 years in the federal documents. Uh, capacity mapping of the procuring agency should be carried out, especially with uh, respect to high value tendering, bid evaluation and contracting, inventory management, contract management, problem solving, decision making. So this is another area where the capacity of the uh, procuring agencies and their uh, staff needs to be developed. Many people uh, regarding the uh, tender value evaluation, uh, regarding the procurement methods, assessment. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry there was some disruption uh, from the internet. So we close the class. Uh, uh, the planning part of the procurement is over. If there is any discussion from the class, uh, you're welcome. We can have uh, five minutes more to discuss anything uh, which you need to discuss in the class.
So thank you very much. If there is no discussion in the class, I think the class is over now. I targeted 4.30, so about 4.22. Anji, any class, any discussion in, in Ayat? Any, uh, would any one of the class would like to add something to the discussion? Yes. No, sir. No more questions. Um, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. I'll share the recording uh, with all of you through the link. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, sir. Thank you. Allah is. Yeah. Okay. Goodbye.